What is up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about a Earl Grey tea from Tivana and the very well known, I think, Flamme 2000. So the Tivana version of Earl Grey, which I will impose a picture over top because I don't actually have in my hands, um, I actually drank today um, while I was out and about. Um, I stopped by Tivana and I actually had them make it for me in the store. Um, and I drank it, you know, just wandering around the mall kind of thing. Um, kind of testing it out, seeing if I wanted to buy it. Um, because Earl Grey is definitely a tea that I tend to lean towards um, when I don't want anything like too fancy. Um, and you know what? I thought it was pretty good. Um, if you don't have any Earl Grey already, I would definitely recommend you pick uh, the Tivana version up. Um, it's a black tea uh, with bergamot bergamot, however you want to pronounce it, um, citrus with just a slight hint of uh, like lavender. So it gives it just a very slight herbal undertone, uh, not herbal, uh, floral undertone. Um, it has a fairly high caffeine content for um, other Earl Greys that I've seen. Um, so if you are caffeine sensitive, maybe avoid this one. Um, but the actual flavor itself is more mild than like Twinnings Earl Grey or the one that I've had from David's Tea. Um, so if you like the flavor of Earl Grey but you don't really like it to be super strong, then this one would actually be perfect for you. Um, I have them steep mine for about six or seven minutes, um, which is much longer than you would normally steep a black tea. Usually you wouldn't steep it for more than about three, maybe four minutes. Um, Cause once you do that, it becomes very, very strong. Um, so usually you wouldn't do that unless you're gonna like load it in like latte style. Um, but this one definitely is mild. Um, so you definitely gonna want it steeped pretty long. Um, the beauty of this version uh, at Tivana is you can get it loose leaf or pre-bagged. Um, so you can get it in like pre-bagged sachets um, for, I think it was $10.95 for a pack of 12. Um, so it's more expensive to get it pre-bagged for you, um, but you're paying for the convenience essentially of having it done for you already. Um, or you can get it loose leaf where you can get like 50 grams, 100 grams, however much you want. Um, and uh, that's going to be a little bit cheaper and it's going to go farther as well um, because you can then control the amount that you want to use as well. Uh, whereas the pre-bagged, obviously, that is set for you. Um, so definitely I would recommend that tea. I personally won't be buying it only because I already have a Twinnings tea and I like it to be a little bit more stronger. But all that said, let's jump into the Lamy 2000. This pen, I, spoilers, really like. <laughs> um, I will completely admit that I was nervous to buy this pen. Um, so nervous, in fact, that I actually put it on the back burner for quite a while um, before I actually pulled the trigger. Um, I ended up buying, I think it's like three or four pens before I actually decided to do it. Um, Price-wise, it's fairly decent um, for Americans. It's $159. So for a piston filler and a gold nib, that's not too shabby. Um, for Canada, it's going to get a little bit more expensive. It's $226 um, with our you know exchange rate right now. Um, but it's, it's up to you um, whether or not that's actually worth it. Um, but for like Americans, definitely jump in. Canada, once our dollar gets a little bit better, then you know it may be worth buying from the states and then having it imported over. Even though I always recommend going with Canadian, you know, retailers supporting our retailers. Sometimes price can just be a big obstacle. But that said, um, I was scared to buy this because I've heard so many things about this nib, which you can see is kind of teeny, <laughs> having what's called a small sweet spot. So essentially when you're holding the pen and you rotate it in your hand, if you rotate it too far one way or the other, it will stop writing. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say that that doesn't bother them whatsoever. They have no problem with the, uh, the uh, sweet spot. A lot of people say that they can't use it because that sweet spot is far too small. Um, so it's kind of a polarizing pen, which is so strange because it's been around forever. 
Um, so obviously enough people like it. And that's why I decided, you know what? Just do it. Put all your fears aside, put everything you've heard from everybody else aside and just do it. And I'm very happy that I did. Um, the way that I hold my pen, this doesn't bother me, the sweet spot. Um, and I do rotate um, like the way that I hold it while I write. Um, typically when I'm writing, I'll tend to rotate it more like to the left as I get to the end of the page. So I kind of tend to finish like this. Um, and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I will show you in the writing sample, you know, how far you can push that. Um, but I really don't have an issue. It's super, super smooth. Uh, the flow is amazing. I've never had any hard starts or skips or anything. So I really actually like it. Um, the clip here is a spring clip. So you don't have to, you know, if you're going to put it in your pocket, you don't have to do anything. You can just go and then let it go. Uh, because you can actually push the end here. You can still bring it up like normal if you want to. And there is the word Lamy written on that clip as well. Other than that, it's a pretty muted pen design. Um, slightly cigar shape with a snap cap, push to post, and it posts very, very securely. I don't typically post any of my pens, um, but this one I, I could because it feels perfectly balanced when posted, even in my hand. Uh, people with larger, sizes hand, larger sized hands, definitely I think you're gonna wanna post it. Um, but this one to me feels great. Um, and unposted whoop, as well feels amazingly balanced. Like the thought that went behind that is just incredible. There's no really defined grip section as far as, you know, like concaved or, or an hourglass shape for you to hold. Um, it just kind of caves down. But because of the material that it's made out of, uh, which is called a material called Macrolon. Um, it has these very fine lines in them, which feel really good in my hands, by the way. Um, we'll get you a mac uh, kind of a close up macro shot of it as well. It's not slippery at all. So it doesn't need any kind of defined grip section in my opinion. Um, but it does obviously offer the silver trim here. Um, to kind of, I guess, give your give you a heads up of where to roughly put your fingers. Um, these little metal clips here that you see, they do come out of the body a little bit um, because that is a what allows the cap to click on. That's what's actually holding the cap in place. Um, you do notice them if you run your fingers over them. That said, you won't notice it when you're actually writing. Um, so they stay out of the way and there is an ink window here so you can see when your ink gets low. Um, that said, you, you'll only be able to see it when your ink gets very low. Um, so basically you'll probably be able to see that you're running out of ink when you've got about four or five more pages worth of ink, um, depending on you know your nib size and stuff like that and obviously the paper that you're using as well. But um, so that's at least nice that there is an ink window because a lot of the ones I have don't have an ink window and that kind of bugs me sometimes. Um, so that's nice. The piston, you can't actually see, which is really nice. It has a blind piston cap. This whole thing right here from about, if I look really closely, you have to look really, really closely in order to see the separation line from here to here. That's the actual piston knob that you'll twist up and down to move the mechanism on the inside. So that is super cool and I'm super impressed by that, um, that it's hidden. But uh, yeah, other than that, I really like the design. Um, you can remove the nib uh, from the housing by unscrewing this section right here, but I would be very, very careful. I'm gonna caution you like big warning sign. <laughs> if you do that, these, little metal clips here. There is a ring on the inside. If you take that off, that, that clip will possibly fall out. And if you lose that, you will not be able to put the cap back on your pen. It will not stay. So should you decide to take the nib housing out of the unit, just be very careful, be very aware that that is likely to happen. 
Um, all right, let's jump into the writing sample. I've got a couple more things to say and then we will wrap up. This is Gerbin Lidete. I really like it in this pen because it's a fairly wet pen, uh, so it really lends well to shading. Um, and this ink, I think, is just phenomenal. Um, so this is a hooded nib, so essentially that's why you only see a little bit here. Um, of course, the breather hole there. Um, so most of the nib is hidden in behind the housing unit. Now that it's a very large nib in the first place, um, so what that means is when you go to get a little bit of line variation, you're not going to be able to get a super, I wouldn't even call that a full line. I would say maybe a half a line difference. So this is a medium nib that I'm writing with now. Um, you'll maybe get to like a medium and a half. <laughs> you won't be able to go a full size to a broad by trying to do that because the tines just can't separate far enough in order for that to happen, even though this is a gold nib. That said, um, it is a typical German style nib, um, you know, in the sense that it writes larger than most Japanese mediums. So it's gonna write closer to a broad anyways. Like it's a pretty beefy medium. Uh, as you can see here, very wet. Lidete tends to be a drier ink, which is why I love to put it in this pen because it's quite a wet writer. I mean, you can see here, those lines that I put down are still wet. And this is Claire Fontaine paper, by the way. Um, so I really like that. Um, like I said, I've never had any issues with hard starts, skipping, anything like that. It's just beautiful. Um, and for reverse writing, you can definitely do it, um, but it's not pleasant. Uh, it's definitely a little scratchy on the other side but you can pretty much go to like an extra fine by reverse writing. So that small sweet spot that I was talking about is if you start like, I'm gonna go dramatic here, like way, way, way on the side of the nib, you know, you're not gonna be able to get anything. But as you start to rotate your hand, you're gonna get some. And I can go pretty dang far to the right where it'll still go. So for me, even if I rotate my nib, I mean, I've got to go pretty far. I've got to go to where like the nib is almost on its side. Let's see the other way. Yeah, see, even then I got to go like pretty much all the way. So I just, I don't understand why people are scared of this sweet spot. Um, you know, you really have to go fairly dramatic about it. I mean, some pens you can do like a full 360 practically. Um, so in that sense, you can't do that with this. But if you're looking at this pen and you're really hemming and hawing over it, do I, don't I, I don't know. Um, you know, the whole sweet spot thing is scaring me. Am I going to like it? Am I not going to like it? Go for it. I mean... Worst case scenario, you don't like it, you can always then either return it from where you purchased it, or if you have a network of people that you know that use fountain pens, you can always sell it from them. And any loss that you incur cost-wise could just kind of be like a rental type fee. Um, that's something that Matt from The Pen Habit kind of told me, that little you know rental fee kind of concept. And I think that's really a cool idea. Um, especially if you don't have a local pen shop around, like I don't. I mean, it's almost an hour for me to get to anything. And a lot of people don't even have that option. Um, so it's a nice kind of safety spot, you know, safety net to have in the back of your mind when you're really unsure about a pen. Um, would I buy a Lamy 2000 again, knowing exactly what I know now? Hands down, yes, I would. So guys, that is enough for me today. I hope you like this video. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. Um, I try and answer any comments I you know, get down there as soon as I possibly can. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you next time, guys. Bye.